begin by examining the pre-reduction radiograph. In this example, a posterior dislocation of the elbow joint is shown. Before the reduction maneuver, perform a neurovascular examination. Check both the radial and the ulnar pulse and the capillary refill. Test the sensory function of the radial nerve in the web space between the index and middle finger, the median nerve on the index finger, and the ulnar nerve on the little finger. Test the motor function of the radial nerve by extension of the digits, the median nerve by thumb opposition, and the ulnar nerve by finger abduction. Procedural sedation and muscular relaxation is frequently required before reduction of elbow dislocations. Position the patient supine on a stretcher. Instruct an assistant to firmly hold the humerus and apply counter-traction. Grasp the patient's wrist with one hand and apply inline traction. Place your other hand behind the elbow on the olecranon process. Correct any medial or lateral displacement of the forearm at this point by first palpating the relative position of the olecranon process to the epicondyles and then applying medial or lateral pressure as necessary. Continue to apply traction to the forearm. You may gently flex the elbow during this process to facilitate reduction. A palpable clunk is usually felt when the joint reduces. Avoid hyperextending the elbow and do not forcibly reduce the joint as this may cause iatrogenic injury or muscle spasm which makes reduction difficult. If you do not have an assistant, you may try the other methods depicted in this video. Position the patient supine on the stretcher with the arm held overhead. While supporting the arm at the wrist with one hand, apply a valgus force to the elbow with the other hand. This is performed by applying firm pressure to the elbow directed medially. Maintain the valgus pressure and gently supinate the forearm. This is achieved by rotating the forearm so the patient's palm faces the floor. These maneuvers disengage the dislocated elbow joint. Next, apply an axial force to the olecranon process to facilitate the reduction. Direct pressure can also be applied posterior to the olecranon if necessary. Place the patient in a prone position and allow the arm to hang over the edge of the stretcher. Place one hand on the patient's wrist and apply downward axial traction. Place the other hand on the anterior side of the humerus, just proximal to the elbow. Continue to apply axial traction and then gently lift the humerus to provide counter traction. A palpable clunk is usually felt when reduction is achieved. Position the patient prone on the stretcher. Rest the humerus on the stretcher and allow the forearm to hang over the edge. Place one hand on the patient's wrist and apply gentle downward traction on the forearm. Place your other hand on the olecranon process. While maintaining traction, gently guide the olecranon anteriorly to facilitate the reduction. A palpable clunk is usually felt when reduction is achieved. Position the patient supine on the stretcher. Instruct an assistant to firmly hold the humerus and apply counter traction. Grasp the patient's wrist with one hand and apply inline traction. Place your other hand on the anterior surface of the forearm. While maintaining traction, apply gentle yet firm backwards pressure onto the anterior forearm. Once reduction is achieved, the elbow can be flexed. Anterior dislocations are rare and are often associated with neurovascular injury. Early consultation with an orthopedist is highly recommended. 
After reduction, assess the passive range of motion of the elbow joint. Flexion, extension, supination, and pronation should be stable. Additionally, repeat a thorough neurovascular exam. Apply a posterior long arm splint with the elbow held in 90 degrees flexion. Obtain post-reduction radiographs to assess for alignment and for fracture.